Good morning everybody. How are you all doing today? I hope you're well. You're joining me on a bit of a... Um, it's a slightly inclement day and I've had to change my plans completely. I was hoping to spend all day in the garden with you today. There's lots to do, including what was the plan? Oh yeah, the final sowings and plantings of the year. Oh. We've got a really, really wet week going on. Now, the wetness itself wouldn't bother me unduly. However, today, this is when I was planning to film, between showers and between drizzle, that was the idea. But we've got this blowing gales going on, uh, some really strong winds, so there's no point. We wouldn't have been able to hear ourselves out there. Um, so, instead, I'm having an at-home day, catching up with all sorts of, oh, just catching up with stuff. Anyway, and I thought, oh, oh, I know. Let's do a video I mentioned way back at the start of the month. I mentioned I would make this video soon. And soon is now. Oh, that just made me think of the Smiths. How soon is now? Anyway, soon is now. Uh, today's video, well, as you'll have seen from the thumbnail, is all about plant-based protein. Yay! So, firstly, I want to say, right from the outset, I'm not a nutritionist. I don't have any nutrition qualifications. Um, of course, you know, I study nutrition as a paediatric nurse. The main thing is, what I'm going to talk about today, it's information that's freely available to anyone um, and this is just a lifetime of experience in this subject because I've been veggie since I was a kid. Um, so much so I can't even remember what the other stuff tastes like, I won't even say the M word, I might later. Uh, so yeah, I'm not a nutritionist. Everything I'm going to talk about today is is on the assumption that you know you're maybe you know fairly healthy you don't have any underlying health conditions with that sort of thing if you do you should always 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 seek advice from a professional someone who's trained in this stuff uh, a nutritionist a naturopath someone like that but like I said everything I'm going to talk about today is you know it's common knowledge it is out there the reason I'm talking about it today, it's kind of, there's going to be a dual aspect to today. I'm going to talk globally about plant-based protein. We're going to have a little visual later on, because I know some people like to take information in visually rather than with words. Um, so we're going to have a little, sort of think about it globally, and then I'm going to talk about, the, you know, the practicalities of actually growing it, growing your own protein. So um, the other thing to say is, you know, I don't, I do mention it from time to time, I'm veggie, I'm vegetarian. I think that's probably obvious from my in the kitchen playlist. <laughs> I only ever eat and make food with vegetables. I'm not going to try and convert anybody um, of course, I would be delighted if the whole world was a vegetarian, it would be great. But, you know, it's not my job to convert anyone. I'm very, very, very passionate about vegetarianism, but I try to keep a lid on that unless I'm talking with other veggies because I don't want people to, you know, shut down barriers. However, I'm aware that more and more people who are meat eaters are trying to have maybe one or two days a week and they're not eating meat it makes sense for the environment it definitely makes sense for your purse and or should I say what you call it and because purse in the states is your bag isn't it you know your wallet your money it makes sense for your money and the other thing is in terms of being frugal and as self-reliant as possible one of the main reasons I'm able to live the way I live is, is because it is a plant-based diet. That's only a small chunk of land I've got for food production. It just, 
just about does it for me as a vegetarian. If I was raising livestock, that is not enough space. I just wouldn't be able to do it. So if you're looking, like I said, I'm not trying to convert, but if you're looking to cut down on your meat consumption, if you're looking to be a bit more self-reliant but you haven't got a huge amount of space, <clears throat> then yes, be assured, you can still get protein from plants. Um, now, the thing to say as well is, oh, sorry, a bit of a wriggly gertie today. You're going to get protein from pretty much anything and everything. However, a lot of, you know, there, there are a lot of plants that are low in protein and we need a chunk of protein every day. We need it for our, you know, the, the very structure of our cells. We need it for our muscles, you know, people think about. But yeah, protein is an absolutely essential part of everybody's diet. Now, the recommended amount in the UK um, is 60 grams per day. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can go online and find protein calculators based on your weight. So, for women, it's slightly less than men. We have, we have a smaller muscle mass. But you can go online. If you want to know exactly what you should be getting each day, go online but 60 grams as a minimum is a you know it's a good place to start so later on I'm going to show you a whole day of eating to get you to your minimum of 60 grams actually it's going to go over 60 grams so yes I think there's a lot of concern with folk where for example I know my mom had it I've heard it so often from friends about their kids or relatives. Someone in the family says, I want to go veggie. And it always seems to be that first concern is, oh my goodness, what are they gonna eat? Where are they gonna get their protein? Um, and I, I remember this is getting much easier these days in terms of eating out or buying processed, ready-made meals, ready-made veggie food stuffs in the shops. When I was a kid, there was nothing. There were no Linda McCartney sausages. There were no, there was no corn, nothing. It is much easier nowadays. But I think it's still <clears throat> the biggest worry uh, in a family when someone says they would like to go meat free, what on earth they're going to feed them. When I was much younger, I do remember, you know, especially sort of traveling on the continent. Again, it's got much better. Um, of just that there being no vegetarian options and so I, I remember so distinctly oh my goodness I was in I think I was in Lucerne in Switzerland I was, gone, I was in a restaurant anyway the meal was brought and it was basically I, I don't know what the meat was but it was and then it had sort of peas and some potatoes on the side and I said to the waiter I said oh no 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 I'd already told them I was vegetarian I said no I'm, I'm vegetarian I can't you know took the plate away literally scraped the meat off the plate pushed the peas and potatoes together and brought it back so there was still meat juice on the plate but it was like I can't I can't survive on potatoes and peas I need something more dynamic than that in my diet anyway uh, yes that's just by way of intro but like I said please don't anybody have a go at me um, no I'm not a nutritionist and no I'm not trying to convert anybody I'm just sharing some information today because people have asked me to so like I said most pretty much everything you eat is going to have some amount of protein in it but we want to make sure we're getting a sort of a bang for our protein buck I generally try to have a little bit in each meal during the day, but there are some meals, for example, let's say my courgette and potato soup, it's going to be really quite low in protein. So, you know, it's really important to think in terms of it over the course of a whole day of, of having a really good, I mean, it's always back to this same old thing, isn't it? Have a varied diet 
have a good varied diet and then you should be getting everything you need. But if I am going to have a meal like that, <clears throat> and I know it's a really low protein meal, I'll just make sure that in my other meals or snacks around it, that I, I top up. <clears throat> so let's go through some of the ones. Um, I made a list because I don't want to forget, so you'll have to excuse me glancing down to read. But yeah, it's important information and I don't want to miss anything out. So um, I think most folk are probably familiar with the idea that things like beans and chickpeas, the legumes, that they're good sources of protein and they are. Top of that leaderboard, I'm going to give you amounts based on one cup. I'm doing it by the cup. Have I got one of my cups out? No, I'm doing it. I'm just, because not everybody in the UK uses cups. You'll see anyway when <clears throat> I'm going to go and show you a, a day's worth of food. Um, I've based everything today on cups or half cups just because, okay, I try to do everything in, in grams. Some folk are still in pounds and ounces. Some folk are in cups. And I just thought if we, if we base everything on a cup, that's a really good visual, isn't it, of how, how much we're talking about. So a cup, it's like half a tin. You know, if you get a, a tin of pulses, it's kind of like half a tin. But yeah, everything today is based on cup measurements, pretty much. So top of the leaderboard, absolutely without doubt, is edamame. A cup, one cup of edamame beans is going to give you 25 grams of protein. It's more than a, if you had a cup of edamame, you're already a third of your way to your protein intake for the day. So let's just talk about edamame for a moment. Edamame, just, you never used to be able to get it in this country. I think, do we think of it as Japanese, Korean, maybe, somewhere in the Far East. I'm sorry if I'm offending anyone by not saying which country it's from properly. But it's now fairly easily available in the UK. Oh, and just, I'm going to talk about cost as well in a sec. In terms of edamame, I think, folk, there's a bit of confusion about the difference between edamame beans and soya beans. Essentially, it's the same thing. It's just at a different stage in harvest. So the edamame is, if you like, it's when I talk about my beans being demi-sac. So the edamame is when the beans are still green and juicy and gorgeous. The soya beans is when they're dry. Um, oh, I didn't look up dried protein amounts, never mind. I'm not actually talking about soya products much today. But the edamame, and just to say, I also looked up in terms of cost. So in the UK, we don't tend to see them fresh, but we can get them frozen. Great, have a bag of edamame, frozen edamame, chuck them in the freezer, scooch out, just like you would your frozen peas, good old frozen peas. So I did cost them, and uh, I based this cost on Sainsbury's, which is one of our big supermarkets. And they ranged between four and five pounds per kilo, which works out, so they are, that's the expensive, it's like the most expensive vegetable protein you can buy. <laughs> they, it worked out that they're about 50%, 50% more expensive than other frozen beans or tinned pulses and beans, that sort of thing. So it is at the slightly, well, they're expensive. They are more expensive. I think it's still cost-wise, it's probably slightly under the cost of meat products. But in terms of vegetable products, it is your most expensive one. But boy, oh boy, 25 grams in a cup, brilliant. Then coming down the scale, Lentils, again remember we're just talking cups, lentils 20 grams a cup, beans, all those lovely, oh, that's why I grow so many, I love my beans, love, love, love my beans, beans 15 grams per cup, chickpeas 15 grams per cup, 
bear in mind, this is very, I'm kind of speaking roughly, things are going to vary ever so slightly, but without having a kitchen nutrition lab, I can't work out the exact amount of every single exact bean. So it may be that my cocoa de pampole beans are slightly higher in protein than say my broad beans, but because I'm mixing everything up all the time, spreading it across the day, I should be getting enough. So yeah, that's, so the edamame at 25 grams versus all our other podded beans at 15 grams, big difference. Um, now let's look at oats. Oats are fantastic. They come in at 15 grams per cup. Yay! Actually, they're a really good one because then when we get into things like quinoa and rice, I'm going to talk about now, there's quite a drop, but we're still getting good amounts. And the reason I'm talking about those as well is because we often have those with our beans. We want a complete chain of amino acids. Actually, I'm not going to get into aminos today because it's quite complex. You can get liquid aminos in a bottle. They're quite tasty. It's like, it's almost like, mm, you sort of, so soy sauce. It's that umami taste. You can always sprinkle some liquid aminos on your dish as you serve it up. But yeah, oats at 15 grams, great. Quinoa and brown rice, about five grams. White rice, coming down to a lowly four grams. Eat your whole foods, guys. Don't eat processed white stuff. Um, now, uh, I'm gonna talk briefly as well about milk, milk alternatives, because they're quite useful too. 100 mils, so I'm gonna talk mils for the milk rather than grams. Soya milk, a whopping seven grams in 100 mils, brilliant. Oat milk, I love the taste of oat milk. It's actually only two grams, but it's still, you know, it, all, all these things add up. And if you're putting a bit in here and a bit in there, you well, we'll see in a second how it all adds up. And then just some sort of little bits, sort of side bits. Um, let me show you over here. Um, nuts and seeds. I didn't go through all the various nuts, but for example, now I'm going to talk quarter cup now because there's no way any of us is going to eat a whole cup of seeds a day. I don't think we would. They're expensive, aren't they? Apart from anything. Also in terms of the really good fat content, but you wouldn't want to have too many. So this is values for a quarter cup. Actually, do you know what? I'll just do the maths in my head very quickly. I will, I'll keep it to the whole cup, although when we come to looking at what I'm having for the day, it's not a whole cup. A whole cup would be, of pumpkin seeds, would be 28 grams. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. It beats edamame. But like I said, who's going to eat a whole cup of pumpkin seeds? Sunflower seeds, 20. Again, fantastic. So they're really, really, you can tell, you know, by those numbers, you can see that a really good source of protein, it's about how you add them in without, you know, you don't want to just sit, you're not going to have a meal that consists purely of a cup of pumpkin seeds, are you? Um, and then finally, uh, spirulina. I don't know, in this light, it's not really going to pick up. This is actually really dark green. It's not, I know it looks black on camera. It's dark, dark, dark green. Can you get a sense of the colour? It's actually an algae. It's really, really protein dense. I think, um, I haven't read about spirulina for, I've been using it for ages, but I haven't read up on it for ages. But I think it's the most protein, and it's complete, it's complete protein, back to that amino acid chain. It's the most protein dense and complete protein in the vegetable world per when we're doing it on cup per cup basis but again you're not going to have a whole cup of this at a time so a tablespoon full will give you around about it depends on the quality but again it's sort of four to six 
grams, so a tablespoon, let's say it's going to be five grams on average. Five grams for a little tablespoonful. Amazing! So, oh, let me have a little stretch. So, of course, like I was saying, there's all sorts, there's protein in everything. You know, collard greens are fairly useful. What I'm going to show you now, I'm going to show you a, um, an idea for a day's eating, and it's very typical for me. Just to say, first of all, I haven't actually cooked it. It's all just the, the dried stuff set out. It doesn't look particularly appetizing at the moment. It's all a bit beige because, of course, I haven't got any of the veggies. All of this I would be having fresh veggies with too. This is all my dried, stored produce. It's the stuff that I have in my larder, pantry, whatever you want to call it. It's the stuff I have here all the time. It's always on hand. It's kind of like the base of most meals. And then I'll add into that depending on the season. So there'll be all sorts added, you know, green stuff, lots and lots of lovely, lovely green stuff. And that's going to be eking, eking up the, um, the protein amount too. But all of this I'm going to show you now with nothing else added. Well, you'll see, we'll get to the number in the end. Um, so I think, I just want to make sure, oh, and of course what I haven't mentioned, let's just mention it briefly, I sort of alluded to it at the beginning, is these days there are so many pre-made, like processed foods you can buy. I mean you could literally, well certainly in the UK, I think, pretty much any supermarket you walk into, you will find some sort of vegetarian sausage, of some description, corn, all these various products, a lot of them are soya based, obviously the corn is a fungus, um, a fungi, it's like a, you know, it's a fungi base. Um, if, if you're still really nervous about how to, if you're going to have say one meat free meal a week and you're still really nervous, Go and check out what's on your supermarket shelves. Look on the back of the packet. It'll tell you, you know, per sausage or per two sausages contains 19 grams of protein or whatever. They're going to have, these ready-made things will quite often have a very similar protein amount to your usual meat products. Um, so yeah, check those out. I tend to not have that kind of stuff because of it's expensive you know every time I'm paying for that I'm basically paying for someone else to make my food for me I do have those things I have a couple of bits in the bottom of the freezer I always keep in the freezer just in case I'm beyond pooped and I don't fancy cooking I think oh, I'll just bung a couple of sausages under the grill at least I'm going to get something down my chops and uh, you know a bit of protein too so yeah check those check out products that are available in the shops but if you're going to experiment oh, and the other thing to think about for instance you know if you are doing a bit of a swap things like a chili i love to make chili i make chili with soya mints and beans of course so if you're substituting your meat mints with soya mints again you're going to get a really protein rich meal because you've got your soya mints in there you've got all your beans in there and you're serving it with rice probably so yeah you're going to get a really good protein meal from that even though it's just plants yay right so let me show you a day's eating uh it's quite typical for me and like I said, it looks a bit because mm, it's all dry. But bear in mind, whatever the time of blah, 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 whatever the time of the year is, whatever's fresh in the garden, I'll be harvesting some of that and bringing it home. So right now, all of this lot would probably be having kale, chard, some sort of brassica leaf adding, because that's what's going on in the garden at the moment. Let's have a look. This is an overview of the whole day. You see what I mean? It's all a bit beige and bleh looking. But bear in mind, yeah, once it's cooked and had all sorts of other things added, gorgeous. Okay, so let's start the day with breakfast. Breakfast is... And I've written out the maths here for us all. We're going to have a cup of porridge oats, yum, 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 with 100 mils of soya milk. 
and then this is what I'm, I was saying about the seeds. This is actually, what did I do in the end? This is a half cup of seeds. So it's a quarter cup of sunflower, a quarter cup of pumpkin. Now, I'm not going to have all of that on my porridge, but I'm going to think to myself, here's my half a cup of seeds. I'm going to have these throughout the day. So I'm going to have a handful on the top of my porridge. Yum, 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 crunchy. I'll have a handful on the top of my lunchtime food. I might keep a few back for a, a snack in the afternoon. But this very, very simple breakfast of, by the way, I was talking about adding other stuff to it. I love to add uh, summer fruits, any summer fruits that I've scrounged, blackberries, raspberries, the like, that I've frozen, I like to have those on top too. So mm, nice colouring up. But this breakfast will give me a whopping 38 grams of my protein needs for the day. So just in my breakfast alone, I've already achieved half of my daily intake requirement. Well, that's great. And that's what I mean about saying if I was having a soup for lunch that is very low in protein, I know that I've started my day right with this little lot. Now, lunch, again, <laughs> it looks, oh, by the way, look, it's my, uh, it's my lovely new old crockery. It's so cute, isn't it? So lunch would be, for example, a rice and bean salad. The other thing to remember is these are all dry. So I would use slightly less than this because they will plump up to be a whole cup. Sorry, half cup. So this is a half cup of rice, half cup of beans, brown rice, of course. So that's going to give me, oops, sorry, there we go, 10 and a bit. Plus, as I've mentioned there, if I'm having, say I have half, a half of the seeds for breakfast and then half on my lunch, the other half of the seeds on lunch would add another six to this. But between breakfast and lunch so far, that's 38, 48. And remember, we're looking for a minimum of 60. And this isn't including anything else that I'm adding. So onions, um, some chopped up leeks, chopped up greens are going to go in there. And this is just the very basic, the basis of the, of the individual meal. And then supper. Ooh, let's have a curry for supper. So let's have a lentil and chickpea curry. So it's half a cup of lentils, half a cup of chickpeas. And, oh, what would I add? Well, I'd probably do it in a tomato-y, onion-y base. I'd probably chop some chard up into there. But it's going to be a basis of half a cup of chickpeas, half a cup of lentils, and then I'm going to serve it over half a cup of quinoa or half a cup of rice. But because I've had rice with my lunch, I'll change it up a bit and have quinoa with my supper. And these quantities half a cup of each, will give me 20 grams of protein. So in total, what's that? 38, 48, 58, 68. This represents 68 grams of protein, and it doesn't include anything else that I might add to the dishes in terms of all the other gorgeous veggies. The other thing, of course, is, so we're up to 68 so far, but I can almost guarantee that with all the other bits and bobs added, it would get up to more like mm, 70, ooh, 73, 74. The other thing, of course, to think about is if, are you a snacker? Do you like snacks in the day? You know, mid-morning you might want an apple and a few nuts or an apple and maybe some of the seeds that you didn't have either with, say, breakfast or that you're not going to have with lunch. Another lovely snack, a couple of rice cakes with hummus on the top, great, you've got your protein in your rice and of course the hummus is chickpeas, you're going to get some nice protein there. Perhaps you want to have a yoghurt, there are some really great milk alternative yoghurts now, so you know, a soya yoghurt with a few of the seeds sprinkled on top, I would say... Ooh, oh, I'm losing focus for a moment. Oh, my poor camera. Is it the light again? How can I help it? 
let's pick something. <laughs> let's pick something for my camera. Oh, there we go, that helps it. Yeah, I would say that you could easily, easily get yourself to 75, 80 grams of protein per day just from eating lovely plants. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, it's making me hungry. I'm really hungry now. Okay, let's just sit that back down again because I want to talk briefly about actually growing this stuff because that's kind of the whole point, isn't it? Can we grow our own protein requirements? I hope that helped, being able to uh, just see everything, be it, you know, sort of visualise it. I think it does help, doesn't it? Because cups, grams, it's sort of... What does that mean, even? But when we see it laid out like that, what a lovely day is eating. Mm, can't wait. Okay, so I'm going to rattle through the growing bit. Uh, let's bring you around again. Uh, da, da, da. Let's start off with oats. No, I don't grow oats. The space I would need, I don't have. It's just simply not a viable option for me. I like to weigh things up in terms of you know, how much space is it going to take up and how much would it cost me to grow? So, how much would it cost me to buy the equivalent of what I can grow in that space? Oats is just not worth it. They're, you know, I was going to say fairly cheap. Gosh, is anything cheap these days? You know, relatively cheap compared with other foodstuffs. So I don't grow oats, I've never tried. Rice, ditto. I did watch... I don't know when, it was about two years ago, I watched an experiment, it was on TV, a family were aiming for self-sufficiency and they were trying to grow rice. It was an absolute faff and palaver and they got nowhere with it and they were absolutely gutted by the end of the experiment. And I think it was one of those that confirmed to me that it's just not worth me, my time and again space. So oats, rice, I'm going to buy them. Now lentils, I have tried. Uh, I tried about three years ago and I really enjoyed my little harvest. I didn't give them much space because it was an experiment. I think I got the equivalent of, in, in oh sorry clunk, in terms of, did I mention by the way, I just realised when I was talking about breakfast, a tablespoon of spirulina on my porridge. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. Um, yes, back to my lentils. I did grow the equivalent of about five cups. Yay! However, and to grow them was easy. I literally scattered them on the top of the soil, scratched them in, raked them in a bit, left them. Didn't do anything with them all year. So, so easy. No pests, no nibbles. Brilliant. However, threshing and winnowing them, the pro you know, to process them from getting them out of the plant to getting them kitchen ready. It was such a faff, such an absolute palaver faff. It's one of those where I was pleased with the amount I got for the space I grew them in, but the time it took to harvest and process them, it was not worth it. It was like a whole day. A whole day to to get the equivalent of what would have cost me in the shops about two pounds I can't spend a whole day for two pounds you know that day should be spent sewing to generate an income and from that income I spend the two pounds on the blooming lentils so I'm glad I tried them it was amazing to have my own harvest and have my own taste I was so proud but never again <laughs> Um, what else have I tried and won't do it again? The quinoa amaranth family. We have a weed in the UK, Good King Henry, commonly called Fat Hen. They're all related. Again, a bit of a faff. I mean, they're beautiful plants, but in terms of harvesting and, and timing it right so the seeds don't blow everywhere and then they become weeds and take over, da 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 no thank you, not doing it again. Quinoa can be a little bit expensive. I'd rather just do without completely, in, even in buying, and just spend my money on rice and lentils. Soya, edamame slash soybeans. Now, I was really looking forward to trying them because for that fact of edamame being not very common to buy fresh in the UK, being a bit more expensive, what have you, 
tried them for two years running. I, I generally don't give up after just one year with anything. I'll give it a couple of goes because the weather, variations like that, oh, they were pathetic. They were the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest beans. And again, it was somewhat like the lentils, the harvesting, the fat, it just wasn't worth it. I, I experienced that the first year and I thought, oh, maybe they just didn't grow very well. <clears throat> I bought some different seeds the following year, tried again, got the same. I don't know if it's a case of they just don't like my soil because, you know, some plants work better in some gardens than others. So I did give it a second go, uh, but again, rubbish results, so I don't bother anymore. That space I would rather give over to climbing beans or bush beans that I know I can grow in my garden. So gave up on those too. So what have I given up on so far? Lentils, <laughs> soya slash edamame, quinoa, amaranth, given up, given up, given up. Tried, always try, but not worth it. Certainly not worth it for me. But the two things I always do grow, which are dead easy, as long as we don't have too much of a drought, um, easy to grow, relatively easy to harvest, all my beautiful climbing beans, and you'll have seen this year, <clears throat> if you've been following all year, that the vast majority of my beans, I grow a couple for the pods, but the pods, they're low in protein at that stage. They're nice, they're, they're nice to eat, but I grow masses and masses of beans for either getting them into the big, juicy, chunky stage, get them frozen demi-sec, or, you know, at my nice um, dried stage. Mmm specifically because of the protein so that's why the such a chunk of my garden is given over to beans because i know that for the whole year this is really really important for me likewise the chickpeas i you know i often think about mm, maybe i should give more space to my chickpeas because i do love them but <clears throat> you don't get a huge amount per square meter so i grow them more just for the delicacy of having them green as a bit of a treat. Because you know, the garden works so hard, it's very sort of mundane, work, 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 feed, 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 that the chickpeas for me are my one little corner of, it's pure treat. It's like I'm growing chocolate. <laughs> uh, no, it's not gonna keep me going all year, of course it doesn't. But for a couple of weeks in September, it's just lovely to have that treat. So, I would say, you know, give all of those, any of those plants a go. But based on my experience, most of most of these proteins, these plant-based proteins, rice, lentils, quinoa, whatever, they're relatively cheap and easy to buy in the shops and relatively difficult to grow slash harvest process. So don't bother, it's just not worth it. Buy them, buy them in bulk. The things that do grow easily and well, beans, all the other beans, uh, go for it, go for it. In terms of quantities, people always, you know, often ask me, how, how do I know how many plants to grow? It's trial and error, you know, over the years, I think, oh, I ran out of that, I'll grow more, or, oh, I had too many of those, I'll grow less. So with the beans, each year, looking at all the different types, including all the broad beans, because don't forget the broad beans came and went in, I think it was the end of May, still got a ton in the freezer, yum. Broad beans, climbing beans, all the cocoa de pampol, the bush beans, I grow about 300 bean plants each year. It's crazy, isn't it? Uh, but yeah, so I reckon 300 bean plants a year, and that just, when it's a good year like this year's been, because we've been a bit damp, that just about sees me through. Uh, chickpeas don't, of course they don't, but the beans just about do. So, yay, veggie, plant, protein, it's doable. I hope that was interesting. I hope it was useful. Um, I, I'm grinning now because I'm thinking about eating. I just want to eat all the time. So yeah, I really hope that was useful. Uh, please, if you've got any questions about, in particular about growing, 
I mean, I might not have the answers. I can only I can only answer based on what I've learned over the last sort of seven or eight years, however many years of the growing. Um, but you know, in terms of of how much protein there is per per plant per you know per type of plant. There's all sorts of information out there. So if there's something I haven't covered, Google it. You'll probably find it within seconds. Uh, the main thing is, you know, experiment, have fun. If you're going to have a meat-free day, don't be scared. You're not going to, you're not going to waste away. Um, I sound like I'm being sarky. I don't mean to be. I don't mean to be. I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, if you are, if you are concerned, for example, let's say your child or your grandchild has just said to you that they want to go veggie. If you're really stuck, um, there are quite often there are sort of night school courses on vegetarian cookery. There's so many wonderful vegetarian cookbooks out there, pop along to your library. There's all sorts of resources on YouTube and social media, of course. But if all of that doesn't allay any of your worries about your child or your grandchild going that route, the other thing is, yeah, talk to a naturopath, talk to a nutritionist, and they can sort of guide you, allay your fears and guide you. And uh, yeah, happy bean eating and all the other gorgeous veggies that we get to grow in our gardens each year. Ah, right, that's it, I'm off. I need to go and scoff. I wanna eat something now. See you all again soon. Thank you so much for hanging out with me in the kitchen today. It's my pleasure, as always. Until the next one, cheerio.